Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. I just, I just wanted her, you don't... I just wanted her to like me. So I said, I said whatever I could say to get that sort of reaction. New at noon, the man convicted of killing his best friend in a middle school bathroom 12 years ago, taking to the stand just moments ago, getting emotional. Michael Hernandez is testifying in his resentencing hearing, and Local 10 News reporter Leanne Morahone is in the courtroom for that testimony. She joins us live from Miami. Sounds very emotional in there. Oh, Christy and Constance, a huge surprise. Michael Hernandez taking the stand in his own resentencing hearing. In that soundbite you just heard, he was referring to a pen pal that he had while he was in the prison. She, he, they communicated by phone and also in writing. She was addressing some comments that he made to her. They would talk about serial killers and really disturbing things that you wouldn't really want to hear from someone who is in prison for murder. And he says that his excuse for that was that she seemed interested in it. So he figured he would just play along and tell her what she he thought she wanted to hear. Now let's get you caught up on how we even got to this point, of course. Michael Hernandez, then 14 years old, lured his best friend Jaime Goff, also 14, into the boys bathroom at Southwood Middle in February of 2004. He stabbed him 42 times right there. He later was sentenced to life without parole, but later in 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that juveniles could not automatically face a life sentence without parole. And so that paved the way for Hernandez to be resentenced, bringing us to what's going on today. Now, this is him again. As we mentioned, he did take the stand today for his resentencing hearing. His attorney, Manny Hernandez, guiding through, guiding him rather through that first part of testimony. He first started out by apologizing to Jaime Goff, his victim, as well as Jaime Goff's family and also to another friend of his who he had planned to kill the day before Goff died. but. That friend never took the bait. He also testified yesterday. He also talked about the type of music that he likes, explaining that he has a intellectual uh, appreciation for death metal music. Here is a snippet of some of that part of the testimony. You talk about uh, some very disturbing things with Brittany. Yes, sir. I mean, you talk about serial killers. Yes, sir. You talk about violence. Yes, sir. Why? I was, I was very nervous, you know, leading up to talking to her. I never talked to, you know, uh, a female over the phone. So I didn't know what to talk about. You know, my, my life as, as, you know, being, you know, incarcerated, it's very mundane. So I tried to think about what could I talk about? What could I, you know, um, fill the conversation up with? And I knew that she, you know, because the way she reached out to me, and, you know, various things uh, she had said in her letters, that she had an interest in, in, in crime or from my perspective. I All right, so that was the portion of the testimony where he's talking about why he talked about serial killers and other sort of uh, violent topics of conversation on the phone with that pen pal who he had a sort of phone and writing relationship with. Then comes cross-examination, and prosecutor Gail Levine wasted no time jumping right at him. Aggressive she was, getting right down to the nitty-gritty, asking questions of him as to why he listened to music with the lyrics that he did, questioning whether his emotion that he showed in court was even sincere. She even asked him whether he had something in his hands that was causing him to hurt himself and therefore having him muster up those tears. She even called him out saying that she didn't see any tears on his face. Uh, let's go to some a portion of that part of the cross-examination, including a part where he, she asks Michael Hernandez to address his own sister in court and explain to her why he planned to kill her, why he put her on his hit list when he was just 14 years old. She contacts you because she has a fascination with serial killers. And when she writes you, you tell that she writes you because you're young and 
she wants to know how your mind works, right? No, that's not what she wrote to me. She never said it in the, she never said that at all. She's fascinated with gore, right? I think so. Just like you. No. You don't want to admit what you did was wrong, what right? I, what I did was wrong. Oh, today you're saying that. I've said it for I've said it for a long time. Did you ever tell your sister Christina while she was on your list? No, we were told never to discuss the case. You never told her. Well, I was following the advice of my attorney. How about you tell her now? She's sitting in court. I had absolutely, I, I love you, and I had abs absolutely no, no intent to ever do anything to you. I was mad one day, and that's all it was. I love you. Prosecutor Gail Levine pulling no punches on Michael Hernandez. Uh, he also mentioned in court that if he were to be released, he would like to get his bachelor's degree. He does work at a law clerk in the jail. He says he would like to become a paralegal and one day get married and start a family. Things broke here for recess about 15 minutes ago. They will resume at 1245 and we will have a lot more on this riveting court hearing coming up at Local 10 News starting at 4. For now, we're live in Miami. Leanne Morejon, Local 10 News.